Hi, this is Heal Body, Mind and Spirit, and my name is Dermot Farrell. And today we're going to be talking about diabetes and herbs, and looking at some of the herbs which can help to treat your diabetes. Diabetes is at epidemic levels in the world today. More people than ever are suffering from diabetes. Some people have a genetic component in their diabetes. Uh, also, our sedentary lifestyle mixed with a lot of processed, high carbohydrate based foods seems to encourage diabetes. Whatever the case, diabetes is here to stay. And according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, it is number seven on their list of the top 10 killers, the top 10 causes of death in the world today. And the reason is because uh, diabetes results in a lot of health complications. We tend to think of diabetes as simply resulting in raised sugar. That's true. But also it results in things like raised triglycerides, which are bad cholesterol, which results in an increase in plaque in the arteries. And uh, this alone can result in narrowing of the arteries, damage to the arteries, cardiac damage, cardiovascular damage, damage to the kidneys because the main arteries come from the heart into the kidneys. Uh, also things like retinopathy, uh, which is damage to the retina, nerve damage, which can result in gangrene and amputations. There's so many things which can come about uh, from diabetes. So it's not that people die because they have a sugar problem, it's because of the complications of long-term sugar problems. And basically there's two issues with uh, diabetic care. The first one is the symptoms, which can be very uncomfortable, such as uh, uh, feeling tired, feeling weak, lack of energy. I mean, there are certain biological factors, for example, uh, diabetics are not good at processing protein, and that has a weakening effect. Uh, they have some energetic problems as well, which makes them feel uh, weak, they tire easily, um, but uh, also they can get things like skin rashes, uh, and other kind of uh, complications from their uh, sugar problem, numbness. Uh, that's another thing they can get. There's so many symptoms which can be irritating, but the more important thing is the long-term damage which will occur over a period of decades of having diabetes. So the first thing we have to realize is that there is a healthy sugar level, which is around about uh, just MMOL and MGDOL, depending upon what part of the world you live in. MMOL basically will be ideally about 5.5 or less, which is about 100 MGDOL. Now, if you're up at, say, 15, 16, something like that, uh, MMOL, which would be up around the 300 plus mark on the MGDOL, you're probably going to have a lot of symptoms. But a lot of people will only be up at maybe 7 or 8 on the MMOL which puts them at 150, 160 on the MGDOL. And the problem with that is you might feel fine, but you're definitely damaging your health. So there's two things I want to cover here in today's video. The first is herbs which can help reduce sugar levels because the more you reduce your baseline sugar level, the more normal you, you become. Uh, there's one, uh, we tend to think of testing your blood sugars as using a glucose tester especially first thing in the morning for fasting sugars. There's also a longer term test, which is a HB5-1AC test, and that will tell you how your blood sugar is in the blood itself over a period of months. So the key is to get that down as low as possible. Now, you might look around on the internet and see people talking about curing diabetes. Now, I live in India, and there's lots of people here who say things like they can cure diabetes. But strangely enough, I've never heard of anybody bringing a patient in that's been cured of diabetes to a medical scientist to prove that they've been cured of diabetes. From my experience, I see some people who are symptom-free diabetics, that basically the diabetes is there, but as long as they do everything right, they have no symptoms and quite possibly no long-term organic damage, which is fantastic. Personally, I don't think it's possible to be 100% cured of diabetes. It's a bit of a theory of mine, is that when you blow something in your system like high blood pressure like diabetes for example the problem will always be there but you can basically reverse most of the symptoms and most of the damage 
by doing certain things but the damage is still there's still some organic damage there if you are if you are pre-diabetic for example maybe you can avoid diabetes the usual thing being to do change your diet and exercise but if you're full-blown diabetic there is organic damage to your pancreas and short of getting new beta cells somehow which would take a miracle or maybe a some magical cure that has to some magic drug is going to come along that hasn't come along yet other than that i don't see how you can cure it so i do understand there's some people out there who are basically symptom-free diabetics their blood sugar and everything is perfect but whenever you talk to these people you always find that they're very strict on their diet and they're exercising and they're taking herbs and they have a, a, a regimen and there's nothing wrong with having that but just realize that they have to stick with that if they start eating lots of cakes and ice creams and cool drinks and sugary drinks and all that stuff they will again head into diabetes so can you cure diabetes i don't think so can you control diabetes yes can you be symptom free yes can you be free of long-term organic damage I think in some cases, if, if it's not too severe a diabetic condition, I think it's possible in some cases. Uh, basically, if you're up at you know something like 300, 400 MGDOL for years, you've probably already got some organic damage. And it might be a case of using herbs to help reduce it somehow. But if you're knocking around, at, say, an MGDOL of like 150 or something like that, it's probably very plausible that you could become symptom free and perhaps organ damage free. So we're looking at trying to use herbs, among other things, to make you have to depend upon the drugs less, have less symptoms, less organic damage, and maybe no symptoms, no organic damage in some cases. So what do doctors normally do for diabetics? They usually give a drug that, like metformin, for example, in severe cases or type of diabetes, they will give uh, insulin, which is a body identical insulin manufactured by identical the body and uh, these are fine to a degree but they're not perfect the, the sugar levels are always elevated a little bit and usually some damage does occur so other things that that they would recommend are to watch your diet and to do exercise exercise i would say personally probably the single best thing any diabetic person can do well it's two things one is to go and exercise on a daily basis if you exercise for half an hour 40 minutes an hour every day it will do wonders for your diabetes because it will help to reduce the sugar levels and also blood circulation all sorts of other things which will protect you from other complaints uh, the other thing is to test your blood sugars the number one problem i see with diabetic patients is not testing blood sugars if you're just become diabetic or you're at a transitional stage where you're trying to control your diabetes because it's going out of control you need to be testing your blood sugars like three times a day or maybe more once you get some control you need to test every day and once you feel it's fairly controlled a couple of times a week i wouldn't go any longer than say once a week to test your blood sugars but there's so many diabetics i've met and they haven't tested their blood sugar in three or four months or a year that's a really foolish idea because you might feel fine but your blood sugar could still be all over the place so getting back to herbs i just want to give a quick run through a few herbs as many many herbs as can help we're going to basically split this into two some herbs that can help reduce sugars and some herbs that are very good for symptoms there's a bit of a crossover as well so just a few herbs that were definitely going to help you a lot is garlic cinnamon and cardamom they're so common cinnamon cinnamon rolls don't know if you're diabetic uh cardamom used a lot in teas and of course garlic used in everything take a few grams a day of each in a scientific tests they've seen a, a drop of 10 percent or more in each of these I'd imagine if you took all three every day, you could see a drop, maybe 15%, maybe 20%. And this combined with exercise and diet could make your job of controlling your diabetes a lot easier, or if you're borderline, might even help you become symptom free and basically live totally normally with no problems. So that's one thing. Uh, we also have crossover herbs, herbs which also help. I mean, each of these next three herbs will help, but I'm kind of including them for their, their organic saving benefits. Uh, the first one I have here is fenugreek. Fenugreek uh, is fantastic for, I've used my notes, it's fantastic for anemia, stomach complaints, uh, mouth ulcers, inflammation, uh, wounds, uh, respiratory complaints. It's a very powerful, very good tonic. Uh, it's also very good uh, at helping reduce insulin levels. It, it's high in uh, water-soluble fiber and it seems to slow down the rate of 
in of uh, sugar spikes within the within the blood, which makes it easier. Okay, so you don't get such a big spike. You don't have to take so much insulin. Uh, so it seems to give a slower release of carbohydrates, which is ideal. Because another thing is, if you are a diabetic, you will be taking low GI index foods, foods which are low glycemic index, slow to release. You know things like your typical biscuit, for example, or cookie, chocolate bars, sweets, ice creams, all these things. They tend to give you a sudden sugar spike, and it's difficult to control. Your sugar levels go through the roof. Whereas something that's slow to release, honey, for example, is very slow to release. Things like oats, for example, are slow. And also, if you take fenugreek, which your seed, which your food, it will slow the release of the carbohydrates. So fenugreek is a great help with the uh, sugar control. Uh, but also, uh, it's good at lowering your cholesterol, which is good for your heart health. This is very important because probably the single, there's many things you can get as a diabetic. Like I said, it, usually cardiac problems because the uh, arterial damage and your heart is so connected to your kidneys, it results in kidney damage. And then there's also nerve damage that can occur as well. But definitely lowering your, your basically when if you're diabetic, your triglycerides go high and it results in plaque in the arteries and artery, arterial damage. So anything that lowers cholesterol is very good. Another one we got here is bilberry. Bilberry is fantastic for retinopathy. It also has lots of other advantages. It strengthens the collagen, which is very good. That's your, for your ligaments, your tendons, and uh, in around your joints. Uh, typically, people get pain uh, in their joints as they get older, and stiff ligaments, and they, they, they're slow to recover from injuries. Well, guess what? Bilberry will actually help with collagen and this starts from about 30 years of age. This is why we get, you know, 35, 40, 45, 50, you get like stiff lower backs and stuff like this. And later in life, 60, 70 years of age, you'll have aches and pains in joints. Also, people like footballers often have bad knees because the synovial fluid is gone from the knees and the cartilage damage and so on and so forth. So this will actually help with boosting that collagen. So again, this is these are something you should be taking as a preventative rather than when you get a problem, you take it, you take it all the time. And you just get the habit it's very good for your health okay but also it's very good at pr protecting against retinopathy in one uh, study they gave 160 milligrams a day and it showed promise what i mean by promise is a lot of results suggest that it seems to be a preventative for retinopathy now that's not fully scientifically proven it's just the results of some studies it's not you know there's not enough evidence to back this up but it seems to suggest that Bilberry uh, is very, very good, and it might help prevent retinopathy. The last one today, <clears throat> it's another one that I think is very important, is evening primrose oil. Evening primrose oil is very common. It's a great cure for many things. Osteoporosis, so again, it's good for giant pain. Um, and the thing, you know, for a lot of people who are diabetic, they become diabetic later in life when they're getting things like giant pain, and they're getting problems with osteoporosis. So again, things like bilberry, things like even primrose, they're going to help your diabetes, they're going to help your joints. Very important. It's good for your skin, anti-inflammatory. Also very good for heart health, so again, we'll try to look after the heart when you're diabetic. You don't die of having high blood sugar, you die of a complication from chronic illness resulting from it. Huge things like heart failure, kidney failure, congestive heart failure, because the kidneys aren't working and they flood the heart, is another one. Another very common one is nerve damage. Uh, often diabetics will have nerve damage, especially to their feet. They won't feel themselves getting cut. The arteries and veins are so damaged from years of diabetes that they get infection very easily. And then the, uh, the foot, for example, or the big toe, uh, it becomes uh, basically gangrenous and they have to chop it off. And this is very, very common. I had an uncle of mine who was diabetic. He went in and got a couple of toes chopped off. On the way out, he got a blood clot, went to his heart, and died instantly. So this is how you die. I don't want to scare anybody out there as diabetic, but this is how you die as a diabetic. It's the complications. So we're trying to look after the symptoms so that you're not having things like skin rashes and aches and pains and feeling worn out but we're, and gaining fat and all that stuff. But also, we're trying to look after the long-term effects so you're not having all that chronic organic damage which ends up giving you ill health uh, and even death. So even primrose oil has been seen as very promising with regenerating nerve cells. So in one study, oh, note that here, they gave the, uh, the participants 480 milligrams a day, so that's a big amount, 
of uh, eating uh, evening primrose oil and they noticed an actual regeneration of nerve cells which is quite amazing so you know this is fantastic so what I'm saying here uh, if you're diabetic you can take herbs that will help things like there's many others but this is just what we can put in the video uh, things like uh, cinnamon garlic cardamom uh, will have a profound effect of dropping your blood sugars at least 10% if you take them a few grams a day every day over a period of months and then even these other ones like bilberry even primrose isle fenugreek definitely fenugreek will also lower your, your blood sugar levels and even primrose isle uh, might bilberry I think probably does so they will probably help a little bit but mainly they're there for their benefits protecting your heart health uh, and also uh, nerve damage and retinopathy uh, so we need to kind of reduce all that possible damage so this is like an insurance policy so you're taking some herbs to lower the symptoms um, and prevent your diabetes getting worse and in some cases reverse diabetes but you're also then taking some herbs as an insurance policy to protect your health so you don't get severe organic damage and all of those nasty side effects so like I said, on the internet you'll see some people talking about curing diabetes. You know, if you're borderline, yes, you might be able to cure diabetes. But once you've had it for a few months or more and it's kind of set in and it's beyond, you know, often people will go through a pre-diabetic phase, which could be a couple of years. And if you catch it in time and do the right things, it turns out to 40 years, 50 years, and you never get diabetes. Uh, Pre-diabetic simply is elevated blood sugars, a little bit elevated. So you might be able to stop in those tracks, but if you've got full-blown diabetes, I don't really think it's possible to cure it, but I think it's possible to become to have very few symptoms, possibly symptom-free, and more importantly, to be getting relatively low amounts of organic damage, possibly no organic damage. So I just being pragmatic rather than giving some hopes and dreams. But the real thing to take away here is that if you're diabetic, there's things that you need to do. The first thing you need to do is to go to your doctor, obviously. Second thing you need to do is to test your blood sugars regularly to keep on track. Third thing is lifestyle changes, particularly with diet and exercise. And fourth thing is you can use things like uh, herbs, for example, to both reduce the blood sugars and also to give you an insurance-like policy against the organic damage. This is one of the reasons why I love herbs is because herbs are tonics. You know, allopathic drugs just fix a symptom and often cause some health side effects. Herbs sometimes cause health side effects with far less times and they tend to not just fix the symptom, they boost the health. And, uh, you know, from a Chinese medical point of view, because my background is Chinese medicine, uh, you know, diabetes is basically a spleen and liver, qi deficiency. These are energies in the body. They're deficiencies. And anything that boosts you and it creates a tonic is going to strengthen, it's going to make you feel better. So just a few little things to help you today, or anybody, if you know anybody who's diabetic, get it out there. Cinnamon, ginger, cardamom fenugreek, bilberry, uh, evening uh, primrose oil. Okay, thanks for dropping by. Uh, give it a like if you like it, and feel free to subscribe, and have a nice day.